Good morning, I'm Reverend Lucille Fritz of the Heinton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Shelton, Connecticut. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are more than welcome into our faith community. Uh, just a couple of announcements. We are in the midst of our generosity season. I am doing a new thing from the book of Isaiah chapter 43 and indeed we are continuing to do lots of new things. In fact, next Sunday we are hoping to be back in our building uh, on a limited basis. Uh, we will be doing social distancing, wearing masks, also anyone who wishes to attend the service will need to register, uh, make reservations to make sure you do have a seat since, since we are limiting. Uh, the amount of people in the sanctuary. So if you're interested in joining us on 930 in person in the building, uh, you can register, make a reservation at hcc at snet.net. That's hcc at snet.net. And uh, we will see that you do have a seat. Um, we will still be live streaming, so no problem. You can still see us here on Facebook and then later on as I post on, on, Twi on um, YouTube. And um, hopefully we will continue to uh, be together either in person or virtually. And of course, always spiritually, we're in the midst of God's presence. Uh, we welcome all your gifts and support, your prayers. Uh, if you would like to make a monetary donation, you're welcome to send it to our church building at 19 Church Street, or you can go to our website, www.huntingtonucc.org, or there's a handy dandy little app on your phone you could download called Give Plus. And all your gifts, no matter if they're times, talents, treasures, or prayers, are more than welcome. This coming Thursday is my prayer day, so if you have any prayers, any joys, concerns you'd like me to raise up, please let me know. So let's just spend a moment and take some nice deep breaths as we center ourselves and settle into worship. <clears throat> breathe. breathe in the love of God and breathe out hate. Breathe in the peace of God and breathe out discord. Breathe in the hope of God and breathe out despair. Breathe deeply. Feel the presence of God in you, through you, and around you. Praise God. Let us sing to God a new song and offer praise together. Let us be glad in our Creator and rejoice. Let us praise God's name with dancing and melody. For God takes delight in us, God's beloved. Praise God. <clears throat>
Let us pray. O God of all, we offer our prayers and praise to you, trusting you hear us and are with us. Inspire us with this time that we may continue to trust in your ever presence. Fill our hearts with love that we may be your image in this world. Gather us in your power and fill us with your spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit in our service and go right to the church at prayer. We offer up prayers for all those who have lost loved ones, especially Fanny's family and all those who have died from COVID and other diseases, other tragedies, other illnesses, other accidents. Let us come to God in prayer. <clears throat> holy, holy God, we praise you for who you are and we thank you. We thank you for all you have done. All around us, we see the glory of your creation. All around us, we see the evidence of your love in our friends and in our families, in the people walking down the street, in the soft breezes, in the warm sunshine, in the gentle rain. You are there and we thank you. We thank you for the many ways you nurture us from our very beginnings, you have been there, urging us to show forth your image in this world and giving us the gifts to do so. And we thank you. We thank you that you are always in us and through us and around us, that you carry us when we are weak and you rejoice with us when we are strong but we do come to you, gracious God. We come to you with the concerns of our hearts, the prayers of our lips, and the prayers of our souls. We come to you with the things that we need, and we lift up to you the people, the people we know and people who we don't know, who are in need of your care and your healing. We especially think of those who have lost loved ones, poor Fanny's family, and for people all around who are mourning, whether it is still very fresh or whether it is years past. And we pray for those who are in need of your healing power, gracious God, for Danny and Patty and Robin and all those who are in need of your touch, be it in body, be it in mind, be it in spirit. And for our world, O oh God, that is filled with so much hate and prejudice and bigotry, so much greed and malice, we pray for your peace, we pray for your justice, we especially pray for your love, your love which can heal all things. So may you, O oh God, instill in us your divine love. Help us to be there and show it to the world in our own actions of generosity, in our own commitment to justice, in our own making of peace. Help us show forth your love and your life. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from the 13th chapter of Romans, reading verses 8 through 14. Listen. 
for the word of God. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, and therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. May God a blessing to the hearing and the reading of these holy words. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are continuing to look at the passages in Paul's letters to the Romans. And one thing about Paul's letters, his epistles, it was about what was going on in the churches to whom he was writing. What was going on? What situations did those churches find themselves? What were the people doing? And you get hints at the things that Paul is saying. And oftentimes it's about things that they're kind of going off the rails about. There may be a lot of bickering. There may be a lot of immorality. There may be a lot, a lot of people trying to take power. There may be a lot of jealousy. All the things that we find ourselves falling into as humans. And Paul addresses them. And today, he reminds them about the greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. We've heard this time and time again, not just from Paul, but also from Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, when he said, love your God, love your neighbor as yourself, he was quoting the law, the Hebrew scriptures, all the commandments, all the law, all the prophets was culminated in love your neighbor. Jesus repeated it. Paul repeated it. The crux of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love. It was nothing new. And yet at times we see it as a revolutionary thing. Love our neighbor? Love our enemies? Love ourselves? Wow. How novel. It's been the message all along. Everything that Jesus said and everything that Jesus did was out of divine love. For the essence of God is love. And since we are created in that divine essence, in that image, that too is who we are, who we are created and called 
to be. And we're not always good at it. Our world shows that time and time again. We fall into debauchery. We fall into licentiousness. We fall into quarreling and jealousy. Because somewhere along the way, the thought of being in community with each other, of sharing with each other, was overcome by our desire for wealth, for our pursuit of power. And even if we are not rich, or even if we're not powerful, we find ways to try to find our power, oftentimes causing pain and suffering in our wake. When we are rude, when we are hostile, when we do not treat one another as brothers and sisters, as siblings in God. We try to find ways to divide us that we can feel better about ourselves. Oh, look at them over there. Thank goodness I am not like them. We remember the Pharisees saying that. But Jesus calls us to something different. Jesus did not come into this world to make us more wealthy or more powerful in a temporal sense. Jesus came into this world to make us rich in spirit and wealthy in love. That is truly what is important. Spirit and love. And everything he did was permeated by that spirit and that love. Even going to the cross, making that sacrifice, showing what love of neighbor truly was. Giving, giving, giving. Opening our hearts in acceptance, opening our minds to listen and to understand, opening our hands to give what we can give to make someone's life a little better, to make this world a little better. That's what the cross was about. Christ died that we may have life, that we may know the extent God would reach out to us to share love and to share life and to share eternity. And that is the gospel. That is the message that was in the Hebrew scriptures. That was the message that is in our New Testament. It all boils down to God's love for each one of us and our love for God and for one another. To strive to make this world a better place. To be here not just for our own sake, but to work for the sake of all that is which we are all created and called to do. And we that remember that, we remember in the way Jesus gave of himself, of the way he gave his body.
in the way he shed his blood. In the way he shared his life. Not just living for himself, but living for the world. And calling his followers to do the same. Let us pray. O holy God, from the beginning, you created this world in love and for love. And your love was so great that you gave us freedom and free will to make our own choices to experience the wholeness of existence. And yet we in our ignorance and arrogance often chose to take other paths away from love. We reveled in greed we built dividing walls between us. We oppressed and imprisoned our brothers and sisters, our siblings, for our own wants and our own needs and our own desires. And yet you still called us back, coming to us in Jesus, who embodied your spirit who embodied your love, who showed us how to live in this world, who showed us how to love neighbor, how to love you, and how to love ourselves. And we didn't like it very much, so we killed him. But you always have the last word. So you used his death to show forth your eternal love, a love that was so great that you would give of yourself, that you would give your son, and a love that's so great that it defied even death. Sins forgiven, life eternal, love never dies. So we remember, we remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks again, he gave it to the disciples and said, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you take this cup and eat this bread, you will remember me. Gracious God, we ask that the power of your Holy Spirit be upon these gifts and upon us, that they may be Christ in us, that they may be love in us, that they may be your image in us, that we can be in this world as you created and called us to be, your love, your life, your grace. We thank you, gracious God, for Christ's life. We thank you that he came and that he will come again. And we await it with joy. And may you hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the bread of life. Take and eat. This is a cup of blessing. Take and drink. Let us pray. Oh God, once again, you have fed us with the food of heaven. We thank you for the reminder of Christ's everlasting love and presence as we share the bread and the cup. May we be filled with the power of your Holy Spirit that as we leave this place, our lives would show forth your light and love to our neighbors, our communities, and our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Love, 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 Christians, this is your call. Love your neighbor as yourself, for God loves us all. Love, 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 Christians, this is your call. Love your neighbor as yourself, for God loves us all. Love, 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 Christians, this is your call. Love your neighbor as yourself, for God loves us all. So go forth into this world refreshed to be God's love in this world. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. God bless. Have a great week.